Okay, welcome function folks for day two. Um, again, three minute review. The idea is you've already tried this and if you haven't, you pause the video immediately so you can give it a go. You need a hint um, on the three minute review. Try a graph if you can get to a graph. Um, otherwise, I'm just going to get right into it. This one is review of yesterday's stuff. State the domain and range. This uh, the domain and the range we talked about yesterday as the inputs is the domain and the outputs is the range. And we want to state uh, the domain and range as all possible ones. Probably what I'd try is some sort of graph. Right? And that's what I said as my, as my um, hint. So I'm sticking with that. Uh, the idea, what's this? This is a parabola that's been moved up for. Right, there's four. And that's out a little bit. There we go. And and I don't even really care about the, the step pattern or anything like that. I just know that this is a parabola that opens up. Now what's the domain? The domain is all values of X. And we kind of think of what we thought of this last year in grade eleven as if I were to shine a light down on this, how much of the X axis would be in shadow? Well, all of it, right? Because all x values are allowed. So the domain for a parabola is x can be any real number. Now for the range, the range are the output values that are allowed. And notice that if I were to shine a light sideways, what part of the y-axis would be uh, in shadow? Well, it would just be from here up, right? And so if I describe those numbers in purple, the range is y is a member of the reals, but y is greater than or equal to 4. And if we didn't have a graph, this would be pretty tough. But we'll, we'll talk more and more about what we would do if we didn't have a graph. Um, this one, unfortunately, you just kind of got to remember what this thing is. Why is that always that pukey color? Probably because I changed it at some point, didn't I? Um, here we go. No pukey color anymore. There. Um, this is a circle. And you just kind of got to, if you don't remember that, you'd have to try and do some points or something, which you can. This is a circle with radius 5. So, well, I don't remember that. Well, now you do, I hope, because now we've actually seen it a couple times already this year when we talked about non-functions. This one's not a function because it fails the vertical line test, all that business. Um, but what's the domain and what's the range? Well, the domain are x values. Just these ones, right? From here to here. So the domain, using set notation that we learned in grade 11, we start at minus 5, is less than or equal to x, is less than or equal to 5. And it's 5 because 5 is allowed. It's uh, right there, and minus 5. And the range is very similar, but this way, right? Right here is the range, just these numbers from there to there. I know some grade 11 teachers are hung up on, you know, where do I put my line and where do I put my curly brackets and all that. And I suppose um, some teachers and some professors in university are hung up on that. For, for me, for the most part, the, this part is implied when you do this part. So you don't have to put this in all the time. If you look in the textbook, they probably do. Um, this last one, hopefully you, you recognize what this shape is, but you might, you might not. Um, and one of the and we will remember this in a second. But if you don't have a graph, how would you ever know what the domain and range is? Well, one of the things that gives us a domain restriction is that there's a restricted operation, and in fact, in here is the same restricted operation as there is in this, and this idea is square root, right? If I think of this, this here, I can't take the square root of a negative number. So I think of, and I'm thinking this, so that's why it's in a thought cloud over here, I, th I think of that having to be greater than or equal to zero, otherwise I'm going to end up taking the square root of a negative, and I can't, right? So I think then, well, what's the restriction on, on x? x has to be greater than minus 4 greater than or equal to minus 4, right? So that's the domain. x is greater than or equal to minus 4. 
otherwise we're taking the square root of a, a negative number. Square root is a restricted operation and in fact there's a square root in here when I were to solve for y I get the same restricted operation. So okay I can see that I can see I can't take the square root of uh, uh, um, a negative but what about y? What's the range? And usually the range is trickier to think about um, and we'll remind you what this graph looks like in a second, but the, the range is, if I think about it, what comes out of a root is always positive or zero, right? So the, the lowest this whole thing in the purple box can get is zero. So what's the lowest that this whole thing can get? Well, minus three. It's y is going to be greater than or equal to minus three. Um, and if you remember, hopefully you remember what this, this is this graph, the square root graph, which is half a sideways parabola, half a sideways parabola will look kind of like that. And I know we'll practice this, don't worry. And then it's been transformed. It's been moved left four, left four, and down three, down three, left four, down three. And so I have kind of its starting spot is minus four, minus three. And that's actually would help us with the domain and range. There's the domain all the values on the x-axis that are allowed, that's the domain, and all the values on the y-axis that are allowed. If I were to shine a light on the y-axis, it would be blocked off from 4, negative 4, up. Um, oh, hang on, negative 3. I goofed that. There, fixed. And that's the uh, three-minute review. What we're talking about today is another one of these basic graphs and and we will review later in the week we will review these transformations in basic graphs but before we do that we're going to actually learn a new one and i think it's a new one I, I don't think there's any of the grade 11 teachers last year that talked about this and why not don't know because it's it's not that difficult of a function um and you actually use it in science quite a bit physics for sure and it's called the absolute value function it compares characteristics of various functions, and this is going to be a new one for almost all of us. Um, and the idea is the absolute value is the distance that a number is from the origin, and it's de donated, uh, denoted rather, with these two lines. Right? Oops, making a mess of things here. There, much better. So this we would read as the absolute value of x. That's red. The absolute, absolute. Wow. Struggling here today, aren't I? Oh, well. You guys will get used to it. Absolute value of x. And it's just the distance that a number is away from the origin. So, um, Normally, we think of a number line. Right? There's the origin, 0. And we're interested in how far a number is away from 0. Some people think of it as the bigness of a number. So, for instance, if I wanted to find the absolute value of minus 2, well, how far is that number minus 2 away from 0? Well, it's just 2 units away. The bigness, and that's one way of thinking of absolute value, the bigness of minus 2 is 2 units. The bigness of 3, well, is just 3. It's still 3 is just 3 units away from the origin 0. I can take absolute values of negative numbers uh, and decimals. Right? The bigness of this real number is just its positive value. It's just that many units away. I can do operations on with absolute value signs. Where I think of the, uh, the, the treat, you treat absolute value signs like brackets, right? Treat them like brackets in expressions like this. Uh, and so that's the absolute value. Negative 3 plus 1 is 1 plus 2. Absolute value of 1, the bigness of 1 is just 1. 
and that's three, and so on. So notice how we got next. Okay. Notice that when we're thinking about the absolute value, it's a pretty easy operation, right? If there's a negative there, we chop it off. And if there's not a negative there, the input and the output are exactly the same. So so this is a little bit strange, isn't it? It's it's um and we're gonna graph it in a second, but if I had the absolute value of some number, sometimes it's just the number itself, right? And this is a black triangle, just because you know, I don't want to write an X in at this point. So I'm finding the bigness of a number. Sometimes it's just the number itself, right? The absolute value of 3 was just 3. And why was that? It was because this number was positive, right? If triangle is a positive number, right? If it's positive. And that's the math way of saying it's positive, right? Greater than or equal to 0. But sometimes we have to chop off the the minus sign, right? Sometimes it's not just triangle, it's the opposite. I, when it's a negative number, I have to take the opposite number, which is strange, but think of this being minus 2. Well, how do I make this positive 2? I take the opposite. So the opposite of triangle, if triangle happens to be negative. For zero, we only want to pick one, and it doesn't matter. So if it's negative, we take the opposite. And I'm going to write that in there, opposite. So this actually gives us a definition for the absolute value function. And, and if I were to graph the absolute value function, um, absolute value function of any input x, I can actually split it into two pieces. f at x is just x, input and output are equal. You know, if I put a 2 in here, absolute value of 2 is just 2. That's if x is greater than or equal to 0. So the input and the output are the same if the input's positive. But if it's negative, I have to take the opposite, right? The absolute value of negative 3 was negative of negative 3 or positive 3. We take the opposite. And this actually leads to a pretty neat graph. Um, I've got mine set up. Hopefully you got your, your, your uh, graph set up. And input is 1, the output's 1. Input is 2, output is 2. Input is 3, output is 3. Right? It's the same. Inputs and outputs are the same as long as x is positive, right? Uh, when x is 0, how far is 0 away from 0? Well, 0. So there's that point right there. And when it's minus 1, it's minus minus 1 or positive 1. When it's minus 2, we take the opposite, positive 2, and I get this actual V shape or an absolute value function. And I want to talk about this a little bit more in a second. And it goes on forever. And that's the absolute value function. Notice the domain is any real number I can find its bigness, and the range is going to be zero or more. Now, I want to mention this. This actually is two lines. Notice I have the line y equals x, which is this line, and it goes on this way. But we don't use this part, right? We don't use this part of the line only when x is greater than 0 we use this part of the line. This is another line. This is the line y equals minus x, which is this line. y-intercept of 0 and a slope is minus 0, and it keeps going as well, right? It's like it's two functions in one, but we don't use this bottom part 
when x is positive, right? So we could think of this absolute value function as two functions in one. And I guess in that way, I suppose um, it is a little trickier than, than the ones that you learned in grade 11, right? You learned this one, you knew this one from grade 10, and you learned this one in grade 11. These are all what we call parent functions. And we'll spend quite some time uh, reviewing how to graph those a, in a little bit. Um, but now that now that we have this new basic graph, we can do all of the transformations on this one that we did for this one. So, for instance, oh, I did on this next slide. Next slide. Okay, I don't want to see how I don't want like these videos getting too long. Okay, I'm going to stop there, and we'll do the last example um, in video two.